All right, I'm here. Praise the Lord, somebody. Somebody say hallelujah. Say it loud. Say it proud. Do you want a Tootsie Roll or not? Hallelujah. Let me hear a good, loud hallelujah. I'm bribing. Oops. Totally got rejected by the chair. All right. We're going to get right into it today. Listen, guys. I know it's different. You can bring that music down. Thank you, Isaac. I want you all to do one, one quick thing. I want y'all to put it, put your hands together. I, we had Isaac and Greg on the camera and sound. They've never done it before. I don't know. Maybe Greg did the camera before. I don't know. But as far as I know, they've never done it before. They did a great job. Y'all give them, give, give them, come on, give them a round of applause. Come on. And, and, and here's the thing. I, I know we've done this before, and Corona threw everything off, all right? So um, I really want you guys to get involved. I believe there's people in here that have skills that can benefit the kingdom of God, that can benefit engine, that can benefit this church, that will benefit you, that we can help hone those skills in the house of God. I'm talking about, I believe there's young ladies, young men in here that can sing, but we don't know about it. They're too scared to sing because they don't want to be up here in front of people. There's people in here that can uh, um, maybe uh, play instruments. Maybe they, they, maybe they want to learn how to play instruments. Maybe you want to do that. Listen, we're here to help you, and we want to cultivate that. We want to... We want that to happen, okay? We want you to be able to do that. So if you're in here and you have some skills like that, we want you to get involved in this, all right? People that are creative, people that can dance, people, who wants to, who would be on a dance team? Who would be on a dance team? Uh, uh, Jade and, and Presley raised their hand and then turned around and looked at their friends and then put their hands down. I totally saw that. Ah, uh, I saw y'all. All right. Things like that. Listen, there are... There are skills that you have. There's creative stuff that we can do. There's people that are good at graphic design. Who's good at graphic design? Who's good at putting videos together? Who can do a video? Who can put a video? You guys are. Listen, I want you guys to get involved. I want you to come to me afterwards. If you're really serious, and we're going we're gonna to help cultivate those skills, all right? And we're going to help plug you in with some stuff, all right? Photography, things like that, okay? Here's the thing. We're going to start a little series tonight called Brainwash. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, Brainwash. Brainwash. All right, look at your other neighbor and say, I'm sorry I picked you second, but brainwash. Brainwash. We need our, a brainwash, okay? I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. You know, it's been a crazy last couple months. Would you agree? It's been weird. It's been the craziest time of your life, probably. I've never experienced anything like this in my life. The closest thing that threw everything off in my life was... Um, 9-11. You guys know about 9-11? And that threw everything off, but I've never seen anything like what's going on now. And I can't imagine what you've gone through. We've gone through COVID popped up. We hadn't had church in here like normal since like the middle of March. That's been a long time. And I know a lot of you guys didn't raise your hand saying that you've seen us online. You hadn't been watching like uh, uh, or like you, you would attend, but maybe you wouldn't want to watch online. But how many of you know we... Who spent more than an hour on TikTok flipping through the, the, the For You page? You'll admit. You spent more than an hour at a time straight. Who has spent more than an hour on YouTube just watching videos? Who spent more than an hour on Instagram looking at different stuff? It was like, no, nah, I'll only be on Instagram for like half a second because people ain't on there like that. Uh, uh, we, who spent out, who's, who's binge watched a season on Netflix or something? See, we, we make time for what we want to make time for. I encourage you. We're putting this on Instagram. We're putting this on Facebook. It's easy access to get to. If you can't be here, we're going to be live streaming. You can watch it. And if you've missed messages, there are plenty of messages to go back and watch. They are on IGTV. They are on Facebook. They are on the YouTube channel for New Harvest Church. You can go back and watch all these, okay? So you search, search New Harvest Cluiston. It's going to pop up. But we make time for what we want to make time for. Anyways... Been through a lot, coronavirus, no school. That was great that first week, wasn't it? Being out of school. Who admit? Who who liked like the when you heard that y'all y'all were staying home from school? Who was super excited? Honestly, who was super excited? Who was sad? Who was sad? Who didn't care? <laughs> Either way, you didn't care. All right. Then you had the quarantine thing. Think about all the things that have passed over the last couple of months. We had TikTok trends, all the different ones, the stupid little wet noodle one. That one is gone. It's not even cool anymore. It was like the hottest thing. 
You don't remember Nick Meow Now. You don't remember? Okay, I'm going to stop. Uh, uh, and all these different things, they've passed, they've come through. And, and, and the crazy thing, during the quarantine, statistics show a lot of things have happened. Sexual abuse has gone up. Child abuse has gone up. Drug use has gone up within households. Parents can't teach their kids. You're sitting there, you're missing out. You, some of y'all in here, if you were honest, you didn't learn nothing. Barely anything in school. And then when they told you you could stay home and be quarantined, you never logged in, you never checked anything out. Your parents could really, if you want to be honest, they could care less. Or maybe you just told them you were doing your work and you weren't, and they believed you because they were, didn't want to check behind you. We've been through a lot. We've been through a lot. There's, I know you guys are going through a lot. And, and I know we want to play around, we want to laugh, we want to have fun, and, and we make everything lighthearted. That is just a face that we put on to hide our true feelings, true things that are going, going on. I want you in here to be honest with God. I want you to be honest with yourself. I want you to be honest. I want you to be retrospective. I want you to look at your heart. I want you to exam ask God to examine you. I want you to examine yourself. And, I, and, 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 and anytime we come in here, and I'm just giving you this little spiel before I get in because I, I want you to know you need to be honest with yourself and you need to be honest with God, especially in this 20 or however long minutes that I have to, 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 to speak to. You need to be listening. You need to be focused. And you need to be worshiping. You need to be pouring your heart out to God when my wife is up here pouring her heart out. Listen, break those walls down. Take the walls down. You got people in here that care about you. Yes, there are going to be people in here that judge you. And that's probably the people sitting on your road. That's the sad part. The people you think are the closest friends. You're worried about them more than you're worried about the other people. But as a, as a whole, people care about you. People want the best for you in here. These young people in here, as a majority, and all these youth workers I know, all these, these, these adults and young adults that are in here, they want the best for you, and they're not going to judge you. So be honest with yourself. If you cry up here, if you jump up here, if you smile, you can smile. It's okay to smile, okay? Just newsflash. It's okay to have fun. It's okay to enjoy being in church, okay? Be honest with yourself. Be retrospective, all right? We had a lot of things happen. And during these things, during these periods of time, the quarantine, during the, the George Floyd incident, that was a tragedy. A terrible thing had happened. And, 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 and we've had riots in our streets. We've had, not in these streets, we had a peaceful protest, praise the Lord, right? We had a peaceful march, but we've had riots across the nation, people tearing stuff up, mad. We've had different things going on. The world, the, the United States and across the world are tearing each other up right now, tearing their own community up. And there's things happening, things happening that we don't understand. I know it's hard for you young people to understand. And you're just, your brain, your mind is being fed things constantly. You're being fed things constantly from different sources. Some might be genuine. Some might be trying to help you. Some might be, have a, they might have a, a secret agenda behind it all that they want to destroy you. They want to teach you things that are against God. There is an, listen, during this quarantine, I want you guys to realize this. A quarantine that holds you, you, you can't leave your house, Right? They said we can't come to church. They don't want us to come meet in the building, right? That's one mark against the church. But the church is more than just meeting in a building. It's, it's ministry outside that. It's you being able to, to, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, being able to minister to pe other people as you go out in the world, if you're a believer in here. And, and they shut that down too. They tried to shut that down. And this has been a battle that is the enemy has put out there, an evil thing, the coronavirus, I believe is straight from hell. And, and here's the thing. It's come against the church, and it's come against what we're supposed to be doing. And if you don't realize that, if you don't see that, and you think it's just a, uh, uh, you, I don't know, you might have all kinds of different ideas about what the coronavirus really is. But I'll tell you one thing that it is. It's a, it is a, is sent from hell, sent from Satan himself to mess the church up. That's one big part of it. That's one big part of it. And you need to realize that. But our brain, our mind is being constantly learning new stuff every day. Good, bad, 
new experiences. We got new skills. How many of you learned something new over quarantine? You went on YouTube, learned how to do something new, maybe. Learned how to make a tie-dye shirt. I don't know. You've seen a tutorial on TikTok. I don't know. You learned some new stuff. You got new memories. You're learning new memories that are going in your head. Good and bad. You're remembering new song lyrics. Come on, you've remembered all kinds of songs, lyrics. You got them in your head. New TV shows. You remember the moments from them. New movies. You, the news is feeding you. There's different ways of thinking that might come your way. Different schools of thought. You know, maybe you got questions about what's going on with 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 these riots and protests and the government. And you've been watching videos on it, and you, and now you have a new mindset on what you think the world should be. Because you've been watching stuff or listening to stuff or talking to people. Or you've made this rational decision based on uh, maybe, maybe some news you've seen. Or maybe you just took the first thing you heard. Your parents told you something. And listen, I'm not going to go there yet. We'll go there but here, in a minute. But there's some things that can be good, but a lot of it is junk. And we just sit in there and we just take the junk coming into our mind, if we're honest with it. We're taking all this filth. We're taking all this junk. These evil things. And they cannot, as a believer, you cannot let them stay in your mind. You cannot let them stay in your mind. The problem is that many people will allow their minds to be filled with ungodly trash every single day. And, and they, have, they have no filter. They have no, about what comes in. They have no discipline to, 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 to not, not to think about things they shouldn't think about. No self-control. No foundation to stand on. No belief system to sound, stand on. So whatever comes in your head, you go with it. Whatever sounds the best for you, you go with it. You live your truth, as people say. You do what you believe. But here's the thing. And we just sang the song, I am who you say I am. I'm going to put this on the screen. That first slide. If you don't know who you are in Christ, the world will gladly step in and tell you who they want you to be. I'm going to say that again. If you do not know who you are in Christ and who God says you are and what he says about the world that you live in, the world will gladly tell you who they want you to be. And you'll follow if you don't have something to stand on. We'll follow. They'll, throw, they'll, show you, they'll put music in your face. They'll put influences in your face. They'll put news in your face. They'll put uh, bad friends in your face, social media. The, world, the devil will use any of that to teach you if you don't have a foundation. Where you lack revelation from God's word. What is revelation? That is when something becomes real, something becomes light to you from the word of God. That's a revelation from the word of God. Where you lack revelation from the Bible, from the word of God, the enemy, he's going to fill that gap. He's going to come in and he's going to fill it with other stuff. He's going to fill that gap with an ungodly mindset, with an ungodly mindset. The Bible says, my people perish. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We see a lot of destruction happening in our streets. I believe there's a lack of knowledge from a lot of people because there's people out there that claim to be Christians that are out there doing things that are not according to the word of God. I want you to think about this. The Bible says, as a man and wo or woman thinks in your heart, as a man thinks in their heart, so he is. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. What you think in your heart is what you're going to end up being. What you think about is what you allow to come into your mind. That's what you're going to end up being. That's what you're going to end up doing. And, and here, I want you to turn, if you got your Bibles, Proverbs 4, 23. Brush the dust off your Bible app. Brush the dust off the leatherback Bible. Can I get an amen in this house? Guard your heart, Proverbs 4, 23. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Above everything else, that is the gate for everything that comes into your life is your heart. And you got to guard it. And before it gets into your heart, it, gets in, it goes into your mind. It's a mindset. It comes up here, and you dwell on it enough, that's who you are. That's become what you think about. It becomes, goes down into your heart, and it becomes who you are. You start acting it out. You start doing it. And, and, and here's the thing. I'll give you an example. What you think about is what you do. I walk around Walmart. I've seen you know, some of y'all at Walmart like every time I go. Go in Walmart. See these little middle schoolers. Little middle school girls, they just be they've been watching TikTok all day, so they're walking through Walmart lately. That was horrible. That's what they look like, though. They be doing it in fast motion. You know what I'm saying? Y'all seen that? Has anybody else seen that? 
They do the most, they do renegade, renegade, renegade. Okay, I know renegade ain't cool no more, but uh, uh, they just be doing these dances. But they've been listening to it all day, and that's all they can do, it's just coming out of them. Somebody that listens to songs all day, you be listening to uh, songs all day, and, and, and you just rapping them as you go, you mumble them 24 7. You can't even, you're like a brain dead zombie, but you know, you're just reciting lyrics. This happens because we let it sit in our head. You know, this, that's a funny example, but let's think about this. If you, if, you, if you live in a constant state of worry, a constant state of fear, especially with something like a coronavirus going around, and you're going to end up cooped up in your house, scared to go out. And I'm glad to see, I wasn't expecting to see as many of y'all as I see today, and I'm glad to see y'all. I'm so excited. Y'all give it up for yourself. Give it up for yourself. But if you watch the news, maybe you got parents that watch the news all day. Maybe it's you. I don't know. They will scare you to death. They'll make you not want to walk outside. Like It's something new every day. Turn the news off for a little bit and read the word. It's people that you're self-absorbed. All you think about is yourself. You start acting out selfish behavior. You think about it like that. Unforgiveness in your heart. Hate in your heart. This is where the whole racism thing starts. People, somebody did somebody wrong. Somebody was taught that, that this race was against this race. And now they become a racist. They become hateful. And then eventually it, they act it out. Not only do they just think it in their heart and say things under their breath when nobody's looking. Because there's a lot of closet people that will say bad things about another race when nobody's looking. Amen. Right? It don't, I, it don't matter what race. I'm talking about everybody. We got... We got White, black, Hispanics in here today. We got any Asians in here? Any Indians? You're Indian? Any Native Americans? No, we need, guys, we need to be more diverse. What are y'all doing? All right, I'm just kidding. But we, I mean, we do, but um, it starts there. It starts in your heart, hating somebody. And then it comes out, and that's when people go and start doing things like that evil, messed up cop did in Minnesota right? That's when that comes out because it starts in the heart. It starts as a thought. It starts as a mindset that, that one, one race is against me or one race is, is less than or one race is, a you know, uh, uh, I had, I, I don't want to get into it, but I, I know people that have been bullied by another race. Maybe they were the only person of that race in that school system or a very small minority and they were bullied and they grew up when they got older. They, they really became racist They became because they sat there and dwelt on the, the, the things that were thought in their head. Not everybody's racist, by the way. Not every single person is racist, and that's a mindset that the world tries to tell you that everybody hates you. We live in a generation that has a great opportunity. We are a diverse generation. Listen, young people, don't buy into the lie that everybody's a racist. Don't buy into that lie. This is a generation that wants to love each other. Really, it's a generation that wants to listen to the same music, whether, whether you're, you're white or black, whether you're Hispanic. You want to listen to the same kind of music. You want to wear the same kind of clothes. We, are a, we get on the same kind of apps. We do, this, we, we do a lot of the same stuff. There's not a, a separation like the world wants to separate us. Don't buy into that. I'm going to go into some other things. Lustful thoughts. You're struggling with sex. You're struggling with pornography. You're struggling with, with, with uh, not sleeping around with every, any and everybody. First, you got to cut off the lustful thoughts. You got to turn off the, the, the thirst trap photos on Instagram that you're looking at these Instagram models. You starts there, then it becomes you going looking on websites you shouldn't be looking at, and you wonder why you're struggling with that. Well, you started thinking on it. You opened up a gate. You opened up a door. And it, how about this? The music you listen to. Listen, I was there. Loved me some good R&B music when I was growing up, right? But also loved me some bad R&B music when I was growing up. And it had got my mind thinking about things I shouldn't have been thinking about. And it opened up a gate for things that, that I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have let in. Listen, you're not ready for all that. Young people, you're not ready you cannot handle all that sex and all that stuff yet. That's why the Bible says don't awaken those useful desires before it's time. That's what the Word of God says. Don't awaken it before it's time. There's a time. There's a person for you, a person. And I know maybe you, you've already been, you got a body count that, that would, you'd be so ashamed to, 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 maybe you brag about it. I don't know. Maybe that's who you are. 
I'm going to be real in here tonight. But the fact of the matter is, there's one person for you. That's God's plan. That's God's plan. All right? I ain't talking about Drake. I'm talking about God's plan. And there's one person for you. It ain't a million. It ain't a thousand. It's one person. It ain't 10 or 20. It ain't, let me keep trying and see which one I like the best. It ain't two at the same time. Or three. It ain't no side chick thing going on. Side dude, I don't know what you call him. It ain't no entanglement going on. It's one person, okay? One person. We wonder. I'm going to talk about the music. We wonder why, why we act the way we act. We got these sick, we listen to these, mu this music. I'm a savage. I'm a savage. You classy, you bougie, and you, you what is it, ratchet? Got all these different things. Man, you like, like you got a personality disorder. You a savage, you classy, you bougie, and you ratchet. You like all oh, these don't really. Anyways. But the, if you listen to the song, I know it's a funny TikTok. Yeah, my daughter thinks it's the funniest song in the world. I'll admit it. But when you listen to that song, it's not a good song. And, and, and you're sitting there getting a mindset from, from Megan the Stallion. I can't even say it. And, and, and I don't know. And you, you listen to Nicki Minaj and, 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 and Doja Cat. And you, and you a female in here. Listen, females, young ladies. You listen to all these people. And here's the thing. Now you're starting to look at, like, look at them and you want to look like them, maybe. You think you're going to look like them. Listen, you ain't going to look like them unless you got millions of dollars to buy your own body parts, okay, that you want to add to yourself. Let's be honest here. But you sit there and you fill your mind with this thing. And we've got a generation that has no I got I got to hurry up. we got a generation that don't have no respect. Disrespect. You sit there. Your Instagram is this. This is my pinky finger, my ring finger, okay? Ah. Everybody doing that. Look, don't. I'm going to do this. You got the lady sitting around doing this. You about, you like 11 years old with this photo with nothing back there. <laughs> Acting like you something. Acting like you something. Because you sat there and listened to all this garbage music and li had, followed all these garbage people and filled your mind with filth and garbage. Young men and young women. I've seen some stuff today on, that I, that. People that follow us on the engine, I'm on their story. I just click through the story, and I, and I see some stuff. Uh, 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 talking about guns. I'm talking middle schoolers. Talking about guns. And you wonder how it gets to that point. Well, you sat there and listened to Roddy Rich talk about he's got a Glock on his lap or whatever, like he's a cop. And we wonder why we want to disrespect the police and defund the police, but we listen to all these songs about uh, uh, blank a cop. Come on, somebody. I don't get no amens in this Presbyterian church. Blank a cop. Blank this. And talking about guns, how he's got a gun. He just hit a lick with a box. That means he robbed somebody with a gun. Literally just means he robbed somebody with a gun. Is that cool? You're going to rob people by, by, at gunpoint? That's what we're doing now? You didn't earn whatever you took from them. And that's the sad thing. We have an entitled. I'm, I'm going there. We got an entitlement mentality that you deserve this and you deserve that. And we don't want to work for it. If a man doesn't work, a man doesn't eat. That's the Bible. You got to work. You got to put some work in. Everything ain't yours. Everything ain't given to you. There's some work. There's some effort. Y'all treat God like that. You pray to him one time and expect all your wishes to come through. Like, like I said before, millions of times. He's your genie. You know, you rub the lamp and you say, I'll raise my hands this one time. and I need, Lord, I need to make uh, uh, all A's on my report card. I got straight D's and, and, and one F. But I need you to come through this week. Lord, I love you so much. You got that one time that you pursued him and you expect him to come through and you didn't put no work in, didn't put no faith in. But we, we let these mindsets come in. Unfiltered stuff, unfiltered cursing. The enemy has set out a plan in an attempt to get you to conform, conform to an anti-Christ mindset. Often we don't realize it, what's going on, because we don't have a foundation to stand on in the Word of God. The Bible is our foundation. Listen, I'm getting ready to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to get y'all get y'all done at 810. You can get snacks on the way out. And we'll be out of here, okay? My, my daughter said amen. She really wants me to go and be quiet. All right. So our foundation is the Word of God, the Bible. That's our standard. 
You have to have a standard. You have to have a, mind, a, a way of life, a way of living. That's what I mean by a standard, a foundation. That when somebody comes and tells you otherwise, you're like, no, that ain't how it is. Let me show you right here in the Word of God. Or maybe beliefs get challenged, but we don't check on what the Word of God says about it. We just take it for granted. Because the enemy, like I said, where you lack in revelation, the devil, the enemy, will come in and fill it with something else, something ungodly. And we also lack the ability to hear from the Holy Spirit. Listen, when you got saved, and, and, and just about everybody in here except to Jesus that I know at one point or another in this youth group, I remember seeing you or I've seen you, I just know by your actions that you proclaim, you proclaim to be a Christian. Listen, it, it, that's what we're here for. That's what we're doing in here tonight. That's what we do on Wednesdays. We're Christians. I'm, I'm up here trying to give you the word to empower you to live your life, a Christian life, all right? I'm not up here to feed you snacks. I'm not up here to, to entertain you and, and play TikToks and do things like that. I'm here to give you life. I'm here to give you word. I'm here to give you living. The Bible is living, breathing, moving. God has a word from you, whether it can be spoken through me, whether it can be spoken in you reading the word of God, whether it be spoken when you're just praying, praying in the Holy Ghost. Some of you guys are praying in the Spirit, but you haven't been doing it. You need to start doing it again. The Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you when you get saved. That's God talking to you. That's God on the inside of you talking to you, speaking to you. But we don't know how to hear from it. We don't know how to hear from him. We've turned him off. Listen. I want you to turn over. I'm going to read this. I, we're going we're gonna to go. We're going to talk about this for a couple of weeks, all right? Because your mind is a very important thing. What you let sit in there and rot. You take some nasty, dead, listen, the ways of the world, the ways of Satan, the ways of the enemy, those are dead. Dead things. Dead things. You take a dead raccoon. You throw him in, 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 in let's see, uh, uh, you put him in your kitchen under the sink, okay? You just hide him up under there. You go to eat dinner one day. You're going to smell that dead raccoon rotten. And tell you, let, if you're going to let them dead things sit in there, they're going to start to stink. They're going to start to rot. They're going to start to get leak into all different areas of your life. That whole house is going to smell like a nasty, rotten, dead raccoon. And the same thing happens when we let the nasty junk sit in our, our, our thoughts. We sit, they sit in our thoughts. I want you to turn over to Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. It's going to be on the screen. I'm skipping ahead of my notes here a little bit. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. What is conform? What is conform? What does that mean? Do I have that screen? Do I, have that? I had a screen on conform. Can you throw that up there for him? It might be back a little bit. I might have skipped ahead. But when you conform, you take the mindset of the culture. You take that mindset of the culture. You take that pattern of the culture. The enemy wants us to conform, to fall into a pattern of an antichrist way of thinking. When I say antichrist, I'm not talking about a person called the antichrist. I'm talking about a, a, anything, any way of thinking that is against Christ's way of thinking. That is an antichrist way of thinking. That's what the enemy wants you to do. But it's called a mindset because you can set your mind. You can set your mind. And when he talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind, you got to put on a new mindset. You have to put on a new mindset. You cannot let the junk sit in there. I want you to put, that, put the one about the renewing of the mind. Can you throw that up there? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Y'all seen Transformers. They're a car one day. They're a bumblebee robot the next day, okay? It's a transformation. They're not the same thing anymore. It's a change by the renewing of your mind. What does that mean to renew your mind? Listen, when you get saved, you get a new spirit on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you when you accept Jesus. But your body doesn't change at all, right? Some of y'all was ugly. You lived an ugly life, and then you got saved. Now you live a good, clean life, but you're still ugly on the outside because your flesh was ugly. God gave you ugly. I'm just kidding. Nobody's ugly in here. I'm just kidding. I just want to make sure you're all paying attention. But your body don't change. You don't get a six-pack when you get saved, right? Guess what else don't change unless you change it? 
your mind. You're right. Exactly. Adrian, come up here and preach, bro. I'm just kidding. I'm playing. Nah, I like it. He's listening. My guy right there. All right. So your mind, you have to choose to renew your mind. You have to do that daily. Daily. Throw that slide back up there one more time for me. We have to daily decide to live with a mindset, a mindset on what God says about us and what he says about the world around us. Because we're going to start believing different belief patterns that aren't true. The news media can trick you. The, in, the social media influencer can trick you. Listen, there's people out there. They may not advertise it. They're artists, they're musicians, but they straight up worship Satan. They straight up do. I mean, you're going to tell me, you're going to look at Lil Uzi and tell me ain't something wrong with that man. They straight up sing about the demons in their life. And they sit there and act like it's no big deal, right? And we sit there and look past it because they got, you know, I just like the beat. This is my, my famous, my favorite line that people say. I like the beat. I like his flow. I'm not really listening to what he's saying, even though he, you know, he said, blank a cop. I got a Glock on my lap. It's not a guitar or something like that. I don't, I know it from TikTok, okay? But what I'm saying is, and we're going to get into this more. If y'all, y'all come back next week, who's coming back next week? Yeah? Who come back next week? Who come back next week? We're going to get into this. I believe we're going to, we're going to, if I can get Pastor Porter to come to the keyboard real quick. Uh, we're going to hang out a little bit. I hadn't seen a lot of y'all. I'm going to make sure we got time to hang out before we get out of here, okay? But here's what I want to tell you. You need to work on your mindset. What is your mindset? What is your foundation? What, is the, what do you filter the things that come to your mind? Do you have a, you know, I'll use one more example. Who likes sweet tea in here? Who likes sweet tea? You like sweet mix? You like a mix? How about, how about unsweet tea? <laughs> You like unsweet tea? I drink unsweet tea because I'm crazy. But anyways, um, a tea, you don't take the tea bag with all the leaves in it and eat them leaves. Anybody here eat tea leaves? Some crazy? Yeah, you might. There's a filter that goes through and you get the good part out of it. You, 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 there's a filter. Those tea leaves taste like straight dirt and grass, okay? Anybody ever ate coffee grounds by themselves? Anybody like coffee? It's not good. It's not, I like coffee, but I don't like, I wouldn't sit there and eat the coffee beans. You know what I'm saying? It has to get filtered through something. The junk that comes in our mind, it comes at us, if you have the Word of God as a filter, if you have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit speaking to you and you're listening, He'll filter those things that come at you and you'll see not only that something is wrong or something is right, but you'll see what the root of it is. Because we'll, you, here's the thing. You get stuff thrown at you all the time, and you don't realize, like, where is it coming from? Well, you can see that maybe there's, the, I, I see this with the news media. And I'm not saying all news is wrong. But I'm saying there's definitely an agenda out there to make people divide. There's a race, they're trying to start a race war that doesn't need to happen. They're trying to do that, and they're egging it on. Because it gets ratings. There, it gets ratings, right? And, and you can see through that that there's something going on because the vision is not God's will. I said this, and, and, and maybe I need, my wife told me I probably need to go back into this because she told me that y'all, y'all weren't watching on Instagram like, like I thought. I remember when this, when this whole George Floyd thing went down, I got on Instagram and I, and I, and I just, I just gave, laid out the word of God, what God said about this situation. And it's a really good one. If you want to go back and watch it, it's on IGTV. It's called What Can You Do? Because I'm like, there's a lot of people up in arms about stuff, and they want to do something. But what can I do individually as a young believer, as a young Christian, what can I do about this situation? And I went into a bunch of different things. But, but here's the thing. We cannot fall into the mindset that the world's trying to throw on, on us. We have to realize that, that there's an evil devil out there, a real devil. There's real demons out there, but, and they're out there trying to terrorize, trying to divide. God, listen, 
the Bible says Satan come, came to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? That's what Satan did. Kill, steal, and destroy. So as Christians, this is the next part of the verse. I'm gonna, Well, let me pause. As Christians, we can't be stealing, we can't be killing, and we can't be destroying, even if it may seem like we're getting justification through that. Even if it may seem like it's the right thing to do. Even if that person deserved to be beat down, everything stolen, destroyed, and killed right there. That is using the devil's weapons to fight the devil. You just add more on top of him. You're not fighting on God's side. So we got to come to have life. That's what Jesus, Jesus came so we can have life and abundant life. Jesus came so you can have a good life. Jesus came so you can have more than good, overflowing. Abundant means I got so much, I got stuff I can give to other people. That's abundant. God wants you to be that blessed. God wants you to walk in that kind of peace, that kind of joy, all right? So here's the thing. We can't be falling into the mindset of the world. If it, if it involves stealing, killing, and destroying, that's the, that's the devil's ways. We got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How do we do that? We get in the Word of God. How many of you have a smartphone? Who has a smartphone? How many of you have internet access as, from some device? You can go listen. We will Google any and everything. The first cough we have, we're going to Google coronavirus symptoms. But when we, our first problem we come at, do we, we can hop on, we could hop on Google and see what the Word of God says. But a lot of times we choose not to. And it's that easy. It's really that easy. It's that easy to ask the Holy Spirit, help me right now. And a lot of times we don't. We go run to our friend. We go run to other sources. God's sitting there like, I got my word here. And if you can't, if you don't see it in there, my Holy Spirit's going to reveal it to you. That's why God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit, and he speaks through his word. And he has a living, breathing word that he wants to speak to you. I'm going to get more into this next week. I'm going to close. I want you to stand up real quick. I'm not going to ask you to come up here. I just want you to stand up in your seats, and we're going to pray for this food, and we're going to get out of here. Everybody stand up. Father God, we thank you right now. I just thank you for all these young people in here. I thank you that, that, that this is going to be a, a youth group that is filled with people with the right mindset, with a mindset that, that is founded and filtered through the Word of God, with a mindset that, that is, is, is all, always listening. Their heart is always listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying. A youth group that walks in power through your Holy Spirit, Lord. A youth group that affects change wherever they go. All these young people in here are called to a purpose in life. I thank you that they find their purpose. I thank you that you speak it to them. I thank you right now. If there's anybody in here, you're just in here. I want everybody to bow your head. Nobody looking around. If there's anybody in here and you're like, man, I've really, during this time, took a break from Jesus, took a break from the Word, took a break. You were, Pastor Cora, you were the only word that I heard in my life and the fact that we didn't have an engine, I, I didn't even, I didn't pick up my Bible. I didn't do that. It just, it just took me by surprise, and I got far away from God. I got far away from God. I let a bunch of junk pop in my mind. I don't even know what to believe. I don't even know how to live. My home life is a mess. And, and you were the only word that I got, and I only halfway listened to you anyway. But it was just, it was, a, it, it was at least something. And you're sitting here, and you're like, man, I haven't even engaged Jesus. I hadn't even spoke to God. I hadn't even prayed over my food maybe even. If any of that stuff speaks to you and you want somebody to pray over your mindset tonight, we're going to break some things in the spirit. I want you to lift your hand up. You say you took a break from God. You say you took a break from God. You just need some prayer. Nobody looking around. Nobody looking around. You took a break from God. You need some prayer. You need to light a new fire in you tonight. There's lots of hands. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you right here. And if you're bold enough, I want you to come up to the front in a second. Father God, I speak to everyone that had their hand up, anybody that was that, that struggling with this. I speak to those mindsets. I speak to any strongholds that the enemy has put on their mind. I speak to any kind of oppression from Satan that has been on their mind. I speak to all that, and I call it defeated in the name of Jesus. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Any, these tormenting thoughts that are out there, these, 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 these depressive thoughts that are out there, I speak to them right now and tell them to go back to hell where they came from.
in the name of Jesus. We speak to lustful thoughts. We speak to, to sinful thoughts. We speak to hateful thoughts. We speak to, 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 to thoughts that have people confused about their sexuality. And we command them. We speak to those spirits and we tell them to go in the name of Jesus. They cannot stay on a child of God. They have no right to be tormenting and bothering a child of God. They have no right in the name of Jesus. We draw a bloodline. In the name of Jesus, if you agree with that, shout out amen. amen. If you're bold enough, you want to come up here and get prayer, I want you to come up here real, real quick. I'm just going to lay hands on you, pray for you. Some Those of you that lift your hands, I want you to come up here. Don't be afraid. Come on up. Come on up. Just sit right here. Stand right here on either side of this. If it's just one, I saw plenty of hands. But listen, nobody's judging you in here. Nobody's judging you. These are the people that that, that were, 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 uh, uh, not afraid of coronavirus and they wanted to come out here and have some church. So nobody, everybody wants the best for you in here. And if they don't, I pray to God right now, they don't come back in this, in this room. If you're going to be in here judging people for coming up here, you're in the wrong place. So if you, up, if you raise your hand, I want you to come up here if you got some guts. Come on up here. You raise your hand. Come on up here. I want to pray for you. I've seen, I seen your hands. I know who you are. Come on up. That's all right. I'll give you another second. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. There's still time to come up. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. If you're scared to come up and coronavirus is your excuse, either either as a, as a believer, your hand, my hands heal or my hands pass germs. I believe they heal. I believe the Holy Spirit can work through us. I believe what the Word of God says. So if that's your excuse, uh, that's a lame excuse. So come on up. I'm going to pray for these people. I'll give you one more second. Pastor Porter, can you sing that? Sing along with him. Hallelujah. Here's what we're going to do. So we thank you right now. I'm going to pray for this food. You guys can get food as you go. And I don't, don't play music from the back. We're just going to keep this atmosphere going. We got some snacks back there. Um, they're going to let you get, uh, they're going to tell you how many you can get. And if there's more left over, we can get some extra. It's not a big meal like normal. It's just, it's some snacks. So you'll be able to open them yourself. We want to keep it clean. All right. But plenty of